Today I want to show you how to connect analog joysticks to a Brook wireless fighting board. I know there's some confusion on that. There's not a lot of information out there, at least that I could find. So let's dig in and see exactly how to do that. My name is Preston. Welcome to Enabled. Before we connect any analog joysticks to our Brook wireless fighting board, we first need to remove this jumper. So that jumper is really easy to remove. Just pull up on it and then set it aside. So what we have here is a Brook wireless fighting board and there's nothing connected to it right now but what we're going to focus on uh, in this video is how to connect the analog joysticks. The analog joysticks connect to this row of pins right here. So that's where our focus is going to be today. Now this guy is a PlayStation analog joystick. So if you took a PlayStation controller apart and you removed the analog joystick from it, there are two of these, one for left and one for right, this is what it would look like. I have tried out several different kinds of analog joysticks with the Brook Wireless Fighting Board and what I've found is they essentially, most of them, work the same way. They all look different, but they function the same. So I'm not going to connect this joystick to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board because it's difficult to do. It can be done, and I have done it, uh, but because it's designed to mount to a circuit board, these are hard to solder to, there's not a lot of room, and it's difficult to mount. So uh, I just wanted to show you what we're trying to replace here and uh, it's all going to wire up pretty much the same way. So, having said that, let's pull something in here that is similar to that. So what I have here are two uh, aftermarket analog joysticks. And what you'll notice is that if I pull the top off, this looks really similar to the PlayStation controller that we just looked at. And you'll notice that this is the same thing. So this is an analog joystick that's mounted to a circuit board. And what they have done with, with these guys is they have provided pins right here that you can wire to. And we can take these out to our wireless fighting board. So to do that, there are several different ways. Um, is go to Amazon.com and buy a bundle of jumper wires like this one. So this is jumper wires with female on both ends. You can get them with female on one end and male on the other end, or you can get them with male on both ends. Uh, they come in a bundle just like this, and then as needed, you can strip each individual jumper off and then you can connect a jumper like this onto each individual pin of the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. So of course you'd have a whole row of these coming out and then you can connect this end to your analog joystick. So if I wanted to connect to this analog joystick, I could take the other end and plug it into the pin of the analog joystick and there you go, that's how you connect it. Now these jumpers are pretty short, you can of course cut them and you can splice wires into them to make them longer or you can buy them longer or however you want to do it there's a lot of different ways to to make these connections but this is the method that we're going to use in this video okay so on the brook wireless fighting board you will see if i can get some light in here so it's a little bit easier to see the brook wireless fight board is labeled on the board itself. So each one of these pins is labeled. On this end, you start with ground, and then their next pin is an R3. And then we go RY, RX, LY, LX, and L3. And then the very last pin on the opposite end is VCC. So on, if you just wanted to connect one analog joystick, so normally of course you would have two, but let's just pretend for a second that you only are interested in one 
analog joystick. This joystick is also labeled conveniently, so each one of these pins is labeled starting on this end, it's ground, the next pin is plus 5 volts, the next pin is VRX, and then VRY, and then SW. Now ground and plus 5 volt is the same as ground and VCC on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. On this guy, the RX and RY corresponds to the X and Y axis on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. Now that SW is the switch that is pressed whenever you press down on the analog joystick. So if you just press directly down, you'll hear that click. And that is the button that is pressing when you press down on the joystick. That is what that SW pin does. And that is the same as L3 or R3, which is as labeled on a PlayStation controller. Those two buttons are called L3 or R3. L3 for the left joystick button and R3 for the right joystick button. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can't connect this one joystick up to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. I have some jumper wires over here that I'm going to use. I'm going to use red for the plus 5 volt, and that is going to go to the VCC pin there on the very end. I've got a green wire that I'm going to use for ground, so I'm going to plug that in to the ground on both the analog joystick and the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. I've got a orange jumper that I'm going to plug into the X pin. So on this analog joystick it is VRX. And on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board I have two X options. I have an RX or I have an LX. And of course the RX means the right joystick in the X direction and the LX is the left joystick in the X direction. So since we're just doing one joystick, it doesn't really matter. I just need to be consistent. So I'm going to plug it into the RX pin. And then I have a gray wire here that I'm going to plug into the VRY pin on the controller, on the joystick, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to plug it into the RY pin of the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. So I connected this joystick up as though it were the right joystick, and we're not going to have anything connected to the left joystick pins. And then just for fun, if you wanted to plug in the switch button, I've got a blue jumper here that I will plug in to the switch pin on the joystick. And then that would be R3 on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. There you go. So this is how you would plug in an analog joystick to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to plug this in to my computer. So I have a USB cable here that I'm going to plug into the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. So we'll plug one end to that USB cable here. And then I'm going to plug the other end into my laptop. I'm going to get my laptop fired up and we will open, we're going to open a software, a piece of software called DS for Windows. So when you open up DS for Windows, this is what it's going to look like. This is the connector, or I'm sorry, the controller that I have connected. We're going to go over to profiles and I haven't set up any special profiles, so I'm just going to double click on default this is what it's going to come up as. We want to know for, for this 
uh, demonstration, we want to see what the analog joysticks are reading. So we're going to click up here on controller readings, and here you go. So what you're looking at, uh, this box right here represents the left analog joystick. This is what the Brook Wireless Fighting Board is telling the computer that the left joystick is doing. This box right here is the right analog joystick. Now remember, right now, we do not have the left analog joystick connected. So this little f reading here is, uh, it's just noise. The Brook Wireless Fighting Board is picking up noise. Now let's, uh, let's go to our joystick and let's push in the up direction. You'll see that in the computer software, it is picking up a reading, only it's going in the down direction whenever I push up on it. That's because I have the joystick upside down. So I just need to turn the joystick the other way. Now when I press up on it, the computer is reading that it is going in the up direction. So that's that's fantastic. Likewise, if I press left on it, it goes in the left direction. All right, so there you go. That's our we've got our analog joystick hooked up and it's working properly. Now you'll notice that the left joystick is moving when I press the right joystick. That will go away if we connect another joystick up to the left uh, joystick. So that's, that's a simple way to connect one joystick up to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. Now you're probably saying, well, the odds of me doing that are pretty slim. I'm going to want two analog joysticks connected up to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. And there's only one ground and there's only one voltage signal. So how do we do that? Well. Let's try that out now. I'm going to unplug the Brook Wireless Fighting Board USB so it's no longer connected to my computer. Here's the other end here. We don't want to be plugging and unplugging anything on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board while it's plugged in. So shut that off first and then let's unplug some of these wires. I am going to unplug the ground and the VCC voltage wires. And what I have done is I have prepared two special wires for this occasion. So what I have here, I tried to keep the colors consistent, so I still have a green and red wire. So here's a green wire that we're going to use for ground, and what I have done is I have taken two of those jumper wires and I cut the end off of them. Actually, I took three jumper wires and cut the end off them. And I soldered them together. So I have one female end going across, I have soldered that cable into two separate wires, also with female ends. So all I've done is I've taken three wires and I've combined them into one. I did the same thing with the red wire. So you're going to need two wires like this that split, that split in, one wire splits into two wires. Then, we're going to take that setup, we're going to take the single wire, and we're going to plug it into our VCC. And then, of course, we're going to take our single wire of the ground, and we're going to plug that into ground. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can fit everything in the frame so you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so to pick up where we left off, I've got one red cable into the VCC pin on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board and it splits off into two wires and then I did the same thing with the ground. So I've got this 
split wire into the ground pin on the Brook Wireless fighting board. And then I'm gonna bring in the second joystick. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna connect one of the split wires into the ground on this joystick, and I'm gonna connect the other end of the ground to this joystick. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the red wire, except instead of the ground, I'm gonna connect it to the plus five volt pin on that joystick, and I'm gonna bring it over here and plug it into the plus five volt to this joystick. So now you're feeding both joysticks the same ground connection and the same VCC connection. And those are going straight to the board. Uh, I didn't disconnect any of the other wires, so we still have the orange uh, and gray wires going to the X and Y axes, and then the blue wire is going to the R3 connection. We need to do the exact same thing with the left joystick. So I'm going to take a purple wire and I'm going to connect it to the left x-axis, which is labeled VRX in this case. And I'm going to connect that to the LX pin. I have a gray wire here that I'm going to connect to the y-axis on the left analog joystick. And then I want to plug that into the LY pin. And then just for fun, I'll plug a black wire into the switch button or the switch pin on the left joystick. And that is going to go into the L3 pin of our Brook board. Okay, there you go. So now we have two joysticks connected. We have used all the pins that are on the Brook Wireless Fighting Board. So this would give you full functionality of analog capability that you'd normally have on your PlayStation controller or Xbox controller. So let's go back to our computer. Let's plug our USB back into the laptop. And let's test this out. So since we unplugged our joystick, what we need to do is restart DS4 for Windows. We'll go back into the default profile. And then we're going to go back into controller readings. So now that we're back in the controller readings, you'll notice that the left joystick is now centered. That little black square is centered on the red dot just like the right joystick is. So now we should have accurate readings from both of these joysticks. So let me just take the right joystick. So this is the same one that we had connected last time. And I'm going to put it, push it in the up direction. Okay, so it's going up. Now I'm going to move it left. And it's going left, down, and right. Up and to the right, up and to the left. Okay roll it around. So this is working uh, just like we would expect it to. So now I'm going to take the left joystick and I'm going to try it. So let's push it in the up direction. We're going to go left direction, down, right, all the way around. Very good. So it is also acting like we want it to. So very good. Now we've tested our joysticks. We know that they work. And this is the point part where you would mount these into a box or uh, you know clean up your wires however you wanted to route the wires you could but this is the basics on how you would connect those analog joysticks okay so let's uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna disconnect all these and I'm gonna bring a different joystick in here and let's see if we can't figure out how to connect it I've got another analog joystick prepared here that I'll show how to wire up. So on this guy, we don't have the option. It, it's not set up the same as the con joystick that we just used. So this joystick has three pins on each one of these potentiometers. 
just like this joystick does. So this has three pins, three pins. However, this joystick, these potentiometers are mounted to the circuit board and the circuit board connects the grounds together on both axes and also the VCC, the voltage connector, is connected together here and then just routed to one pin that goes out. On this controller, we don't have that option. So what we need to do is wire the two potentiometers together on both the voltage connection and the ground connection. And then we'll have single signals coming out for each axis, so the X and Y axis. So looking at the joy joystick just directly at the potentiometer, I have wired the voltage up to the right pin and the ground to the left pin. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you do because all that does is switch the direction. So, just for example, if I press this to the left direction, uh, hopefully the signal goes left. If I flip this and put the voltage on the left and the ground on the right, what's going to happen is when I press the left direction, the signal's going to go right. So it's just going to swap the direction. And that doesn't really matter because you just mount the joystick however you want to make it correct. Okay, the only time it matters is if you want to mount it a certain way. Let's say that you want this potentiometer to be facing a certain direction. Then it's important that you wire it up correctly. And really the only way I know to, to do that is just wire it up, test it, and if it's not the direction that you want, then flip the the ground and the voltage signals. So what I have done is wired, the red wire signifies voltage. I've wired from the right pin on this potentiometer to the same rightmost pin on this potentiometer. And then the ground signal, I have wired the far left pin on this potentiometer directly to, if we chase this wire, it's also wired to the left pin on this potentiometer. And then I have a third wire connected to the same pin, so this wire and this wire are both connected together on this pin. And this is the female connection that we're going to connect to the board. So this is the ground connection. And then the same for the voltage, so there's a third wire connected to the pin on our potentiometer, so the two red wires are connected together. This is going to go to VCC on our board. And then our two signal wires are the orange and the gray wires. So we're going to connect the orange wire to, let's say we're going to connect the right joystick, so we'll connect it to the RY pin, and the gray wire we're going to connect to the RX pin. Now this joystick doesn't have a button on it, so there's nothing to connect to the R3 pin like we did the previous joystick. Okay, so our joysticks are connected, so the next step is to plug our USB connection back into our computer, and then we will test the function of the joystick to see if it's working properly. All right, so now we're back into DS4 for Windows. We're gonna go back into our default profile, and then we're gonna click on controller readings. So once again, we don't have a left joystick connected. We only have the right joystick connected, and it is in the center of the dot, so that's what we want it to be. 
So I'm going to grab my joystick here and I'm going to push in the up direction and it's actually going right so I need to rotate my joystick so that when I push that direction it does go up and then I'm going to press the left direction and that's backwards also so up and down is correct but left and right is wrong so what I need to do what what I what's happened is my left and right signals are backwards so I need to swap the gray and the orange wires so let me unplug the USB from the laptop I'm going to put the orange wire in the RX pin and the gray wire in the RY pin and then I'm going to plug it back into my computer. Okay, we've got the joystick plugged back into our computer. We're gonna pick it up and we're gonna try it now. So now when I press on the up direction, it goes up. When I go down, it goes down. When I go left, it goes left. And when I go right, it goes right. So now we have a successful joystick controller. So that was good that I got the wires backwards. Then you can see uh, what happens whenever you get get them backwards and it's really easy to swap on the board and as I said before if you wire the ground and the VCC backwards on your potentiometers and you want it to go the opposite direction for whatever reason all you have to do is unplug it at the board level put your VCC wire on ground and your ground on VCC and then you've switched the the signals so you don't have to desolder it at the joystick you can just fix the problem at the board all right so that's uh how you wire up this guy so how would you wire up two joysticks let me see if i can find a good way to show you how to do that okay so i wired up the second joystick to try and explain how you would connect both joysticks up to the board at the same time. So the joystick itself, we wired the exact same way. So you've got ground on one end, you've got VCC on the other, and same with the other potentiometer. Uh, it's the same, and we wired it the same that we did this one. So the two joysticks are wired identical to each other. The difference is, the, the only difference between adding another joystick is you have to connect the ground not only to both potentiometers on the one joystick like we did before, you also have to connect it to the other joystick. So the green wires, which we have here, all right, so this green wire loops around and connects to the other potentiometer on this joystick. And then there's a second green wire on that pin that runs to the other joystick ground and connects to that. And then of course, as we know before, those two potentiometers are connected together and then we have a ground that goes to the board. Same with VCC. So we have our VCC line connected if we trace this over, it's connected to this potentiometer. And then there's a second wire that's connected here. We trace it over and it's connected to this joystick VCC. Now it doesn't matter where you connect to ground. You could connect on the other potentiometer, potentiometer on this joystick if you wanted to, or the VCC could go to the other potentiometer if you wanted to. It doesn't matter where you connect it as long as it's consistent VCC connection and ground connection. And then of course we have our center wire. So I have a yellow wire here going to our brook board and that's connected to the L, Y axis. And then I have the white wire connected to the L, X axis. So now we have both joysticks hooked up. And then of course we plug it into our laptop we try the two joysticks and 
make sure that the direction we're expecting and the left and right are working the way we want. Now, I'm not going to do that because we've played around with the computer enough. I think you get the idea of, of what we're doing. But that's how two joysticks would be mounted. And then, of course, you would mount these in your box, however you wanted to, and uh, you play your game. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect all this, and we're going to look at one more joystick, and then we'll call it quits. The last joystick we're going to talk about is a brand new joystick that I have not yet tried. And this is it right here. This is an SJJX analog joystick. And what I like about this joystick is it is in the arcade format the arcade joystick format so it would be easily easy to mount this inside of a box it's the size is great I mean it's the same size as a regular joystick uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this now, I will say that uh, even though I haven't tried it yet there are some quality issues so I know that the joystick sticks sometimes gets sticky like this that's no good so I may eventually take this joystick apart and see if I can't fix it, but for now I'm just going to connect it and see how it works. Now, so what you see here is exactly how it is received. Um, it comes with wires already soldered to it. You'll see that this also has the potentiometer uh, design with the joy similar to the joystick that we just looked at. Uh, but they've already soldered the wires for you, so you don't have to worry about that, which is really nice. Uh, the other group of wires on the side here, there's actually LED lights that are underneath of this plate, and that's what this cable here does. Um, if this were attached to an arcade system, you could plug this in, and it would turn on those LED lights, and it's just it makes it a little more fancy. We're, we don't need this, so I'm just going to unplug it and throw that aside, and we're just going to focus on this connector right here. So just like what we did in the previous design, they have already connected the ground and the, v, the voltage, the VCC connectors, together between the two potentiometers. So you don't have to worry about that. However, I'm looking at it and they didn't do it how I would have done it, and that's because they used two red wires here. And of course, one of those red wires is the voltage wire, which is this one, because we know that it's going to be connected to the outside pin. And if you follow that across, that's going to go to the voltage wire here. And then they've connected a yellow wire to that. So the yellow wire is actually the one that we're going to connect to VCC. The red wire that's connected to the center pin here, that comes out and goes to this connector. So the red wire is going to be one of the signal wires, so, you know, RX or RY. The yellow wire is going to be VCC and then the black wire is going to be ground, and then the white wire is the other signal wire, so either the x-axis or the y-axis. Now we can't make use of this connector, so what we're going to do is just snip it off. And then we're going to strip these wires. And this is a good opportunity, I think, to go ahead and try this connector here. So we're going to take these wires and we're going to splice into these wires on this connector and then we're just going to connect this connector down into the brook board. So let's see how that works. This is what it looks like whenever we've spliced in our connector into our joystick. So one thing you have to be careful is that using this connector you have to make sure that you plug it in correctly after you've wired it up because it can plug in both this way and 
if you flip it over, it can plug in this way. So when you plug it in and figure out which wires you need for the pins on your board, make sure that you plug it in correctly each and every time. Now, of course, you can use the single pins like we did on the other boards, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to try this method out. Now, we're only ha we only have one joystick here, so there are wires on this connector that we're not using. I only use the wires that we need, which is ground, VCC, and then our two X and Y axes. And I have this wired up to the right joystick. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, figure out which way it needs to go. So it needs to go like so. So now our joystick is plugged in. Now, of course, if you wanted to add another joystick identical to this, you would have to you would have to cut these wires and then you would have to splice the yellow wire to the yellow wire on the other joystick and the black wire into the black wire on the other joystick and then you would run one one of each of those down to the board just like we did on the other joysticks I don't think I need to go through that again it's the exact same process that we have been doing you're just gonna have to daisy chain the ground wires and daisy chain the VCC wires so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one into the computer and see how it works since I have not tried this joystick yet All right, so now we're back into DS4 Windows. We're gonna go back into our default profile and then controller reading. So we only have the right joystick connected again. So I'm going to push up on the joystick and it goes up, left is left, down is down, right is right. So everything seems to be working correctly. That is good. It actually has a decent feel to it. I, I like the way it feels. So anyway, this is another good joystick. Uh, I think it is reasonable. It's gonna be easy to mount to a box, that's for sure, and it's got good feel to it. And of course, a ball top goes on this as well, just like any other analog joystick would, or I'm sorry, not analog joystick, but arcade joystick. Uh, one thing I, I will note, because I didn't uh, give this detail, but the red wire, let me see if I can trace it. The red wire is the X direction and the white wire is the Y direction. So that's, I had to actually try it before I wired it together to make sure that was right. But since, maybe that'll help you out, you so you don't have to try it. So just remember that those are the colors for which axes and you're good to go. Hopefully you found some of this stuff helpful. Uh, there is one other joystick uh, that I didn't cover that I think is a very popular one, and that is the Ultramark 360 joystick. It is a very different design than the joysticks that we played with today. I promised that I would make another video showing how to do that, and I will do that, but unfortunately I don't have any more of those joysticks. I've used them all. So I have to disassemble some of the controllers that I've built and then uh, I can use one of those joysticks to show you how to connect that joystick to the Brook wireless fighting board. Thanks for watching. All of this is building up to start building more controllers. Uh, I'm trying to get different joysticks and buttons and things for quadriplegics ready to go. So all of this is showing components of how to connect them to the Brook Wireless Fighting Board and then we're going to put all this together into a system and see how that works. It's going to be pretty neat. I hope you stick around and uh, watch those videos. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see some of that or if you learned something today and I hope to catch you next time.